Hello and welcome back to the second episode of Restring Sundays, the video series where we take a cool guitar, restring it, and just talk a little bit about it. Last week's episode was received very well, so we're back with another. Now if you didn't see last week's episode, you're probably wondering what's in this triangular case. Is it the Kramer Gorky Park Balalaika Triangle? I actually considered buying one of those, but then I realized it would have been a purchase for life because there's no way I'd be able to sell it. What's in this case? Let's take a look. This here is a 2007 made in Japan Jackson RR24. So I'll tell you a little bit about how I got it, why I got it, and then we'll talk about the historical significance of this guitar because it's kind of got a pretty cool story. People were complaining about neck support last time, there you go. Now I bought this guitar six or seven years ago at this point and I bought it from Jimmy's Music Store. You can check the link about Jimmy's Music Store maybe there. But as Jimmy will tell you, guitars that are this style don't exactly have a huge market in Ireland, so they end up not really commanding the highest prices. And I picked this one up for 599. And I'll be mentioning how much this guitar would go for now because of guitar inflation and such, but this guitar here, 599. And why did I pick this up? Because it played well, of course, but it also looked really cool. Now this guitar to me is kind of the quintessential thrash guitar. It reminds me of old school anthrax and stuff like that. The one humbucker Rhodes, it reminds me of Chris Holmes from Wasp, who was a big influence on me. <laughs> But this guitar appeals to a different audience than what made it stand out to me. And it's part of the reason that it's gone up in price and it's part of the reason that it's such an interesting guitar. Restring time. We're gonna be putting on Daddario XT coated strings because this has got a Floyd Rose and I really don't like changing those strings. So coated strings are good for this. Player's circle code for someone. Children and Bottom were a Finnish melodic death metal band. And the front man, Alexi Lehu, had two custom shop Jackson Rhodes guitars. One was black with white pinstripes and the other looked very much like this guitar. It was black with the yellow painted bevels. The only real difference was that he had gold hardware instead of black and he had a sticker that said Wild Child on the body. To Children of Bottom fans, that was the Wild Child guitar and it was Alexi's main guitar for many years, from 1997 to 2002. That was until they were playing a festival in Finland and they left the two guitars backstage and they were stolen never to be recovered. So now without any guitars, Alexi contacted Jackson to try and get some replacements, but they couldn't get them to him quickly. The Jackson Custom Shop has historically been um, slow. I'm not sure what the time frame is now, but it would have taken a couple of years, and if you've got a tour booked, that's not much use to you. So then Alexi started reaching out to other brands, one of which was ESP Guitars. And they could make him guitars, so from 2002 onwards until Alexi's death in 2020, he used ESP Guitars. So what does this have to do with this guitar here? This is a Jackson. Well, this is viewed by many as sort of the unofficial Alexi Lehu signature Jackson guitar, and there's good reason for that. <laughs> Alexi was with ESP from 2002, and in 2006, they released Alexi's first signature guitar in two color variations, white and black, and black and yellow. So that was in 2006, and in 2007, Jackson released this guitar. Perhaps it was just a coincidence, but it's a very close time frame, and coupled that with the specs of this guitar, it's hard to see it as anything but an intentional decision on Jackson's part. This is a 24 fret maple neck through with ebony fretboard and alder winged guitar. Those are the exact same specs as Alexi's core model guitar. It also has a single pickup which is an EMG81 just like Alexi's. Really the only difference between this and Alexi's custom was the hardware color and that's very easy to change, hence why this guitar is so sought after by the Children of Bottom fan base who want the old school Alexi Jackson signature guitar that never was. You might be noticing a couple of cracks in the finish of this guitar. 
And from what I've read, this was pretty common with some of these guitars that came out of this factory. Whatever way they did the paint, it would crack on certain parts of the guitar. And this one is no different. It's got cracks here on the back, two of them, and it's got one on the front as well. They're not incredibly noticeable because the guitar is black, but up close, you can definitely, definitely see them. Now, to me, this guitar is a stage guitar. It makes a statement. It looks cool, and it's very light. Like, you can lift it with one hand very easily. So, it's a good stage guitar. Of course, it'll get damaged very easily, like all Jackson Roses do. The ends get chipped so easily, but it's kind of meant to be a stage guitar because it's not a very good studio guitar. It does one thing. Uh, it's kind of my main complaint of this guitar. It's got the single EMG. Now, EMG do get a lot of hate for the active pickups. I don't think it's bad. I just think it's a bit restrictive because even with a passive pickup, you've got no tone control, so you can't simulate a neck pickup. I like a neck pickup, so this guitar to me is a little bit limiting. But it's designed to be limiting. You can't really complain about that. <laughs> For those that wanted to see inside the control cavity, it's actually surprisingly big for what's inside. It's just one volume pot wired up, and uh, this predates the EMG Quick Connect system, so this is all soldered in. Now this is part of Jackson's Pro series, uh, came out in 2007 and lasted until about 2011 until they stopped all production in Japan between 2011 and 2012. All the Jacksons I own are made in Japan Jacksons from around that era. Um, not for any particular reason, it's not like a conscious choice, it's just they were good and those were what were available when I was purchasing. Ugh, I hate Floyd Roses, I just, they're the worst. Mark my words, next Restring Sunday will not be a Floyd Rose. This is painful. Now unfortunately, I say this as a guitar owner of many guitars, uh, guitars tend to depreciate in value rather than appreciate in value unless you get the right one. The majority of guitars they go down. There there has to be certain ones that you get that will go up. And a lot of the time, that's signature guitars. Because they have the association of the artist, and it's not just guitar players that want it, it's, it's the fan base. And this guitar, even though it's not a signature guitar, still sort of falls into that category because it's the signature guitar that never was. In a alternate time zone where Alexis Rhodes weren't stolen and Jackson, or they were stolen and Jackson could deliver them in a timely fashion, this very well could have been an Alexi signature and would have remained an Alexi signature for years to come. So I've seen these guitars go, bear in mind, the original retail price was, I think it was like $1,700. That's dollars, I I'm dealing in euro. I've seen them go for 2,500 plus. It's more about the history of the guitar, but it's also unfortunate to say that these guitars didn't always command that high of a price. Uh, they really only went up to those extreme levels when Alexi died. Now they haven't really gone down because they're not particularly common and there seems to be a decent amount of Children of Bottom fans who want guitars that look like his original Jackson Rhodes. <laughs> There's not a whole lot more to say about these guitars. There is one quirk with this one that uh, I own two other Made in Japan Jacksons and they're both made in the same factory as this one. But this is the only one that uses the Gibson style truss rod, which is my least favorite truss rod. It requires one of these things. So I'm gonna spend some time setting this guitar up, getting it ready to play for the playing demos you've been hearing throughout this video. And I'll probably spend some time swearing at Floyd Rose while I'm at it. But let me know what you'd think about this guitar. Is it something that you would play or is it something just completely off the wall for you? And uh, I wonder what we're gonna restring next. Like the video, it really doesn't do anything for you, but it makes sure that the algorithm doesn't screw me over. And uh, I will see you on the next video if you subscribe. Okay, see you then. Bye bye.
What do you think, Gingy? Good guitar?